Craniopharyngiomas are non-cancerous tumors that grow close to the pituitary. They most often occur in childhood or after the age of 50. Before giving more information about craniopharyngioma, let's briefly look at the anatomy of the pituitary gland and the optic nerve. The pituitary gland is located in the brain, just under the hypothalamus, between and behind the eyes, and in front of the brainstem. The pituitary gland consists of two lobes, the anterior and posterior lobes, and these lobes are connected with the hypothalamus by the structure called the pituitary stalk. The pituitary gland is about the size and shape of a small kidney bean, or approximately 6 to 8 millimeters, and controls many bodily functions, including reproduction, growth and development, metabolism, and organ function. Now, the nerve responsible for human vision is the optic nerve. The optic nerves relay messages from your eyes to your brain in order to create visual images. And immediately above the pituitary, the optic nerve from each eye comes together and crosses over into the opposite sides of the brain where images are perceived. And the point of crossover for these nerves is called the optic chiasm. Craniopharyngiomas are usually large, with both cystic and solid parts. They can grow up and out of the pituitary gland, or around the optic chiasm. When they grow up and around the optic chiasm, they can put pressure on the optic nerve, and this pressure, which is applied by the tumor to the optic nerve, can cause loss of vision. This may occur in one eye or both, depending upon the part of the optic nerve that is affected. And when they grow up and around the pituitary stalk, they can put pressure on the pituitary stalk and interrupt the signal to decrease the production of prolactin, resulting in an abnormal increase in prolactin levels. Or they can interrupt the nerve signals to the posterior pituitary to release antidiuretic hormone, which in turn can cause frequent urination. Other symptoms can include headaches, eye movement weakness and double vision, excessive thirst and urination with the involvement of the posterior of the pituitary, nausea and low blood pressure if there is adrenal insufficiency, or vomiting, fatigue and increased sleepiness sexual dysfunction, personality changes and confusion, constant hunger and weight gain if the hypothalamus is involved. So how is the assessment of craniopharyngioma done? Presence of the tumor is confirmed by magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI. These tumors have a characteristic appearance on an MRI with both cystic areas and solid areas. And visual assessment with an ophthalmologist may be needed to determine if there is pressure on the optic nerve. Additionally, pituitary function tests can be done, such as a cortisone stimulation test for adrenal insufficiency, a thyroid function test, a prolactin test to rule out a prolactin-producing tumor, IGF-1 as a preliminary evaluation for growth hormone deficiency, and gonadal function tests. So, how is craniopharyngioma treated? There is currently no medical therapy to treat craniopharyngioma. Generally, surgery is recommended to remove the tumor. In the event of weight gain related to hypothalamic damage, other treatments may be needed from nutritionists and weight management specialists. Depending on the test results, pituitary hormone replacement therapy can be started. Because craniopharyngiomas can grow back slowly over time, lifelong monitoring is necessary. Also, an MRI at least every five years and regular follow-up by an endocrinology and ophthalmology team is recommended. Now, in summary, craniopharyngiomas are non-cancerous tumors in and around the pituitary. They can grow silently to a large size before being discovered. Craniopharyngioma is mostly seen in children and adults over 50. Some people experience peripheral vision problems if the tumor affects the optic nerves. Also, pituitary and hypothalamic damage may occur with large tumors. Current treatment for a craniopharyngioma is surgical removal.
and magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, is recommended every five years to ensure there has not been regrowth of the tumor.